Those of you who came to hear me talk about Adolf Loos, uh, at the end of the last talk, I did launch into Schindler, and I went on and talked about his, the first house he designed in America. I, I'm going to repeat that this time, because um, uh, I, I'm not sure how many people have not heard that. Um, what, um, born 1887, so the same year as Le Corbusier, until 1953, he practiced in, the, uh, in America, between 1921 um, and, and 1953. Um, he practiced as a sole practitioner. And if you look at the logbook of his jobs, he did 100, had 150 projects in that time. So uh, most of all, which were fairly small scale works that he, he did. Um, in the picture you can see on, on, on the first slide I've got, I've got up here, I have a quote from him in 1912, which is when he left uh, Vienna uh, and emigrated to, to, to America. Uh, and <coughs> I'll read it. Um, uh, th this comes out of his, his learnings from, from, from Loos. Okay? Um, the architect has finally discovered his medium, uh, in, in the medium of his art, space. The comfort of dwelling lies in the complete control of space, climate, light, mood, within its confines. It will be quiet, flexible, a background for harmonious life. And that, that, uh, that sort of uh, sums him up a bit as an, an architect with nerves in the same way that Adolf Loos is an architect of, of nerves. Um, the image at the bottom is a dear old, is Google's, what's it, a joiner photo. Um, uh, and that's how a lot of uh, uh, Schindler's work, if you visit LA now, um, that's the sort of thing you'll see. You can see the corner of a house and you've gone up a road that winds um, a, a, a lot like that. Um, that's the other, the, the red dot shows the house that you've just seen, the corner of it peekabooing onto the road. And what you see there um, in one of the denser parts of Los Angeles is that houses these days <coughs> are much larger than the ones that he, he, he tended to design, uh, and they fill their full lot, and they, they're, they're orientated very much to the frontage of the road that they're on. Um, the, uh, 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 the Oliver House that you see there is at 45 degrees. Um, that's because it's at the top of a hill, and I'm going to show you that house in more detail later on. But um, uh, to move on, um, uh, that's a repeat of the quote I've just read to you. Uh, I've put in a quote here from Enrique Mirales, uh, who, like lots of us, uh, managed to get to uh, Los Angeles and stay there for a bit of time and see things. Um, and it's him commenting on his reaction to, to Schindler. The house is rather like a tightrope walker who keeps a number of hoops turning about his person. It's a difficult and fascinating balancing act. After 50 years, because that's when he started seeing these buildings, um, uh, the tree roots, the walls, the greenery have arrested this movement. The ground is definitely occupied and the, the main thing is, it never ceases to amaze me. Uh, and the, there's a drawing of his that accompanied this with a longer sort of poem that he, that he wrote, showing the, um, the hoops, you know, if you do the balancing with the plates running round. So that, that, that's a sort of comment on him uh, as an architect. Um, now, to go through the sort of basic things, uh, a picture of him traveling to, to New, New York um, uh, in, in 1912, the man with the hat and the coat. Um, uh, uh, he, he eventually, he managed to uh, get to Chicago and, 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 and to work for Frank Wright, and I'll say a bit about that in a minute. Um, basically, what he did for Wright, um, he, he supervised the jobs in, in America while Frank Wright was over in Japan doing the, the Imperial Hotel. Um, he, 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 Frank, he had control, he, he got only intermittently paid, but he had control of the way that finances were done in the office, so he knew he was going to get eventually get, get paid. Um, but eventually, um, while um, uh, Frank Lark was away, uh, he, was, he, he supervised the Barnsdale complex in Los Angeles uh, and a number of other jobs that, that were there. Um, to go to California, what we're looking at there is the West Coast. Um, the dark yellow part is the, basically the, the layout of, 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 of uh, uh, Los Angeles, and the black thing marked you can see are basically where his projects happen. So they're mostly in that the, the inland part of um, Los Angeles. Um, 
There was one on Catalina Island, which is the White Island out to the side, sorry, out to the side here, and in La Jolla, which is down here near the Mexican border. Um, briefly recapping, um, the, his influences while he was back in Vienna, I, I did went through that before, Otto Wagner, the post office, one of these early good, clean, modern buildings, uh, Adolf Loos, the houses that um, I went through with, with him there. So um, uh, this is a view of the Barnsdale house, the one that he worked on for the right. Uh, and in Barnsdale, we'll figure quite a bit um, as we go through this. Uh, as well as that, he supervised the building of the Freeman house, which is one of these concrete block houses. Um, uh, and um, he, he worked directly with the clients and did furnishes and fittings to the finishing off of this um, house. You'll notice uh, it's, it, it suffered very badly for the concrete blocks here because of the salts and the sand that was used. Um, but um, uh, this house is quite, it has a prominent view from the top um, down the long road. Uh, and you'll notice that what originally were concrete blocks on the top here went up, up on the roof. His job was to keep the rain out because it did get in. And Frank Lloyd Wright arrived at this house, seeing it from a distance from the road below and said, what's happened there? And he was told, and um, that's when Schindler got the sack. <laughs> um, and, and set up on his own. Um, uh, to go on a bit more, um, Irving Gill was a contemporary of Frank Lloyd Wright's who was um, told by his doctor to move west to stay healthy uh, and, and moved his practice to, um, um, to Los Angeles, to, to further south actually in, in, in La Jolla, but did work in a, in a number of houses that were done in this simple style here. Um, the, the most formidable of those was a Dodge house um, which was quite a luxurious house for its time, which you can see in, in, in a very simple post Lozian plan. You can see the plan there, it's not particularly, it's more like an English country's house than a, a, little, a large, large car park. One of the significant things that um, uh, um, he did was in La Jolla, he did a building called the Women's Club for a woman called Scripps, who was a uh, uh, decided that women, as, as men had clubs, that it would be good for women to have clubs. And he, he experimented with this, doing a whole wall in concrete. Uh, and he tried, cast, you cast it on the ground, and then when it, as it went off, it was slowly lifted on jacks and went up in a whole piece, this wall, uh, in, 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 in reinforced concrete. And you could see it to the, the bottom there, to, the, to this woman's club. Um, so he was quite innovative in the materials that he used. Um, I'm now showing you a quote uh, from a woman called Pauline Gibbons who became Mrs. Schindler. Uh, and, and, and it's a quote when they were both in Chicago, he working for, for, for Frank Lloyd Wright. She worked in Hull House, which was this sort of place where pe progressive ideas were shared. Uh, and <coughs> I read this out. Um, I did it before, but I'm going to do it again. Uh, One of my dreams, mother, is to someday... Um, to have someday a little joy of a bungalow on the edge of a wood and the mountains near to a crowded city, which shall be open to all, just as some people's hearts are, are open, to, to friends of, of all classes and types. I should like it to be as democratic a place as Hull House, which is where they, they, they met, um, where millionaires and laborers, professors and illiterates, um, splendid and the ignoble, meet constantly together. I mean, that, that, that sort of... Um, uh, uh, people who, uh, uh, it, at that time in Chicago, with, with, with she was into education mainly, um, uh, uh, and they, anyway, they got together there uh, and they had a honeymoon in Yosemite, which I'm showing you, having their camping holiday in Yosemite Park, uh, and eventually came. It, this, is, this is them now um, in the house that he, he, he designed in Kings Road that I'm going to come on to. Um, you noti the, notice, the things here to notice is the clothing, really, and the posture. Uh, Schindler and Pauline, the two on, on the left, um, the, the, the proud grandparents, and there's their son, who was born shortly afterwards, sitting on their knee in front of the house, which you'll note is made out of concrete panels. Um, now, I'm going to, because there, there are a large number of projects, I'm not going to talk about all of them, um, but I want to talk, um, I'm going to talk about a, a, a more on some of these houses and less on some of the others. But I want to go on first, before we go through those, to talk just a bit about Los Angeles. And my way of doing this is to show you, this is going to be a short excerpt from a film by Buster Keaton, shot in 1923, um, and it shows the road layout in um, 
or so into the time. And that's what I'm going to show you here, that this grid layout of roads um, uh, le is laid out. And this is a chase that is going to end up going past um, the house that the Schindler's built for themselves. But before we get there, you can, it does give you a broad idea of, of the, 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 the significance of roads to and car, the car to um, Los Angeles. And, and the scale of space that you've got between buildings then, right? This isn't 1923, because this is very different from what it is now, we're going to see these houses. Um, that will go, yes. Um, again, the, the crossroads of the grid, um, trams there, public transport, so it was there. There again, this is now, we're moving up towards the, the Hollywood Hills here on King's Road, and this building that you now see here is this, uh, the house that he built for himself in 1922. Uh, uh, behind it, you can see the Hollywood Hills rising up. It, it's in a bean field, basically, King's Road, and to move on a bit, um, uh, another view of what uh, this is slightly earlier in Los Angeles, fruit farming, the oil wells, um, the grid of streets being laid out. And to put where you are in context, here's, the pic here's, here's Los Angeles, and we're in this area here, and we're in Kings Road, which is down here, and that house, it, 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 it's numbered here, it's number 139, but it's within this grid of roads that you've just seen in the film, and behind are these hills that, 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 that rise up. Um, going back to the house, um, uh, I, we know already that it was um, built in concrete. This is their hut they had for it. And here's the way that they, um, they built it. Um, uh, it's built in concrete, but not in one large whole wall, as, as Gill did his. They, 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 because there's a fairly primitive way of doing it, that the sizes of the panels are laid out, cast on the ground. Um, they're thinner at the top and thicker at the bottom. Uh, and they're done so that two men could hoist them like this. So that was really the basis for this house that they put together. Uh, being in a field like that on a square plot, it, it's, it's a single-story building, so it can spread out. And these are diagrams, if you like, uh, that, that you can see on this one on the left. That, that's the, the boundaries of the plot. The darker part uh, consists of these concrete walls where they went up uh, and fireplaces, which were done in masonry. The drawing on this side shows that the, 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 having been in Frank Lloyd Wright's office, there was always a grid underneath everything that got designed. Um, moving on to that, uh, this is a fairly confusing drawing, but you'll see the number of letters on it uh, uh, as well um, as spaces, and I will explain those a bit. Um, the, the, the red hatched bit at the top consists of two spaces, one for Clyde Chase, who was the man who helped build it with him, and his wife, Marion Chase, who was a friend of Pauline Gibbons. Uh, that's the, 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 the angle, the shaded part. Uh, they had two equal si almost equal sized spaces at right angles to each other with a patio that they shared. So that was a private house, if you like, for the couple who were there with their bathroom, their hall. On this side, mirroring it, uh, is Pauline Schindler's and Rudolf Schindler's, their spaces at right angles to each other, facing onto a patio, which they, they, sh they, they, they had to themselves. So that's their sort of basic unit is there. Uh, in addition, they had a guest room for people to come and stay, uh, and a garage and a carport that shared for cars between them, uh, and a kitchen. And the kitchen was on the node between uh, Marion Chase's room space, if you like, and Pauline's space, too. Which, so the, the, the organization of this thing was on, on, on the level, uh, and, and, and it started out with this sort of egalitarian um, way of living together and, and, and sharing, and having people stay. Um, to go on technically a bit, that's a section through showing these concrete walls. The, the, the rest of the house is constructed in, in, in a timber frame system with overhanging on the inside to the patios um, that cut, kept the sunlight and, 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 and timber frame. This is a view a bit later on from the top, so you can see how, how it was built. So the, the Schindler part there with their space outside there and the Chase part this side, opening out of space here. They're, they're, they had a space each. Uh, and they had what they called sleeping porches on the roof. This must have come after their honeymoon when they were in Yosemite. That when the climate there, you, you could, if you wanted to, you could sleep on the roof. So there was a, a porch put on the roof of each of them so that you could sleep up there, which could act as a bedroom separate from the main living rooms they shared below. Um, and going on through this very 
quickly, you can see the panels they put up and, and the, the, the Japanese very simple nature of this very simple building. Uh, and I don't think anywhere else quite with this technology and this social organisation uh, existed at that time like this. Um, uh, and these photos, it, 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 the Sh um, Schindler uh, lived and worked out of this house for the rest of his career. Um, the chases moved on and various other people came and shared and, and lived in it. Um, Pauline Schindler lived there for a while. She, she departed for 10 years and lived uh, up the coast at um, uh, Binning with Sea, where, where um, Clint Eastwood was mayor. Anyway, she, she moved out for 10 years and then came back. Uh, Schindler died in this house, uh, died here in 53. She lived on till 77. Uh, and then it got quite dilapidated, and eventually, when, when she died, it's been restored. So the, most, the pictures I'm showing you here of, of when it's been restored to its simple earlier state, because it got quite adapted, uh, particularly by Pauline herself and in her part of it. Um, there you can see the, 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 the junction between the two spaces that the couple would have had with the sleeping porch up above, the sleeping porch and the entrance to the... The, side. the panels between them have these glass glass inserts um, so that you get sort of diffused light on, 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 on that side. But it was very basic and very simple um, way, of, way of living. And the furniture itself inside, the, the, the tin that made inside, again, very basic um, and, and, and simple. Um, and the gardens that opened out and these canvas screens um, um, to, to the side. Um, a uh, quick picture of some of the people there. Um, this is Pauline Gibbons in her one, relaxing with the cat. Um, up here is R Richard Neutra and Dion Neutra, who came to live in the Chase's side um, later on for a while. And the woman below here is Gaka Skeyer, if I pronounce it right. She was a, a, a painted picture dealer who dealt in the Blau Rata group and imported a lot of, kind of uh, uh, um, uh, Paul Clay's drawings in. Um, so, um, uh, out of that house, he got, um, he, he did a trying and, and persuaded a developer in La Jolla, further down the coast, who had a site um, on, on the coast, to take the principles that, that, that they developed in their own house and, and develop 12 of them together. So what you see there is a, 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 a simplified version. It now has a bedroom, all right, but it does have the roof terrace. It, it's basically single story at this level but with a staircase up to the roof, and the middle part of the roof is a roof terrace with a fireplace um, and a pergola across the top, um, but separated. This, 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 this type plan is developed for, for, for 12 of them, and they're, they're mixed together. But, but uh, basically, it's got a living room, it's got a bedroom, it's got a kitchen, it's far more conventional. It's got the, an entrance and the nooks and bathroom, and a small patio outside. So they were laid out in a group um, uh, um, across the coast. You can see they're turned here, at angles, at right angles to each other, small post for parking, um, and, and, and were marketed to be sold off to people to live in this way. And that's what these looked like. Here, they are done in concrete, but the concrete was not done, the panels laid on the ground. They used a combination of, of, of steel angles uh, and, and slip shuttering going up. So the lower part was striated concrete, built in this way. Um, which was, uh, probably was easy in terms of labour. Um, they, they didn't do very well. They, they leaked like a sieve, these things. That they are still there. Um, and I know that William Curtis, who's listening to this, has actually stayed in one of these. Um, I, I did go and visit them, but I didn't get into them. But um, again, you can see how, 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 how the, the simple, almost the camping by the coast, um, but... but um, with a, with a pergola, so you could fill it in, you could fill it in, as well. and quite and that, the upper stories did get filled in by people later on and they got painted. Um, they, 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 they were marketed to people, uh, uh, and although they had kitchens, you could go off and have your meals cooked by somebody around the corner. Um, um, that wasn't too much of a success. Um, I'm now going on to another, uh, another one done at this time, which took quite a long time to build. Um, <coughs> This, uh, it's the Lovell House for Philip and Lair Lovell, who were quite important in um, um, modernism in, in California at the time. Um, we're here, here, here again is Los Angeles. We're, we're now um, down the coast at, at Newport Beach. 
Um, and this is a beach house, sort of holiday house, and it's right on a sand bank out here outside the front of, of, of Newport, um, facing over the Pacific Ocean with water behind it as well. Um, to say something about the clients of this, um, Philip Lovell, um, he had a column in the paper uh, and he promoted physical culture um, uh, and made a living out of it, selling it, um, uh, uh, holding forth. Um, uh, he, he, he was an ideal client, actually, for, 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 for Schindler and, 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 and for Neutra. I mean, there are quotes like, morality of fitness of purpose, um, again, people with nerves, um, open air life, healthy, one combined. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about, quickly, um, this is a picture of, of um, Philip Lovell and his wife, Leia. She and her sister, Harriet Press, um, were both educationists who came from the East and, and settled in, in California. Um, uh, the, the sister, uh, Harriet, married Sam Freeman, who, um, they as a couple did the Freeman house, which I showed you, the concrete block one that Frank, which Frank Lloyd Wright designed, was for the Freemans. So, uh, and they all knew Aileen Barnza, so they, they all had this similar sort of progressive ideas. And the, the, this beach house is basically a sort of holiday home um, uh, rather than a main home. Uh, it, it started in 1922, but wasn't completed until 1926 um, and had considerably better budget than the things you've seen before. So, um, and, and it's really a quite a remarkable building. It, again, it uses concrete, basically concrete and timber, but some still in it. Um, but it used the concrete um, in, in a much more imaginative way. At, at this time in night, I'm, I'm s s putting this next door to Corbs de, de la Savoie because... Um, it, 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 it finished round about the same time. Uh, and uh, I'll go on a bit quicker. But uh, in plan, you can see uh, it ran through... Th ground floor was clear because it was over, over a beach, so it's lifted up as the Pilotti would be on the Corbusier one. Um, but, but above, um, the columns don't go up. You have these pieces of frame that... We're going to get it bigger there... Uh, that, that, that are all are reinforced concrete uh, and, and, and are stacked rather like at, at, at quite regular intervals, um, uh, like the the, the uh, uh, well uh, no, uh, en enchelon, if you like, uh, with these holes part um, in, in between them, uh, and that that what happens here is you're 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 off the ground because you're by the beach, um, but you have a double height living room this side because the columns can go on up and do that. But on the other side, which is smaller rooms and, uh, and access, um, the concrete frame goes on and supports the timber there uh, and uses cantilevers. Here, they are these, these are sleeping porches on, uh, as balconies, plus the bedroom, so the choice of the two and how you, can, how, you can, how you can use them on this side. Internally, the cantilever for the access to the bedrooms along here within the space of, 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 of the living room. So. It, 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 it's much freer in its use of concrete and, and probably more sophisticated engineering than, than, than the domino things have done. Here it is going up on its beach, and you can see it's completely open all around it, those, 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 those frames. Um, and just a comparison that somebody has drawn um, between this house and the Corbs Villa at Carthage, which has, again, the double-height rooming space, but, but the columns are, are doing their own, freeing up the space in the Corbusian way, rather than being integrated uh, or, or, or made to do things. Um, so you've got this thing that's powerfully expressed on the outside, with creating for views to the outside. Um, the, the sleeping porch is up above, but it later got filled in with bedrooms along the side. And, and the access to the side through them, a sort of double second. This, this, this is um, uh, uh, an entrance, so you, could, you, you, can, you come in, be, it being, ex being a beach house, um, it has these, these, these double entrances. And in that sense, and also being 1929, it, it mirrors Eileen Gray's E1027. It's a holiday home to relax in, uh, done in this way. So, uh, and the outside is an important of the inside. It's not a sort of conventional sort of house. But anyway, you, you, you can get to the front one way, which is a stair that slopes like that, and you can get to the bedroom and the kitchen the other way. The double height space inside, again, Frank Lloyd Wright hanging over in, 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 in the glazing, which are timber windows that shouldn't have spent quite a time getting these windows done um, in, in that way. And the double height living here, again, the, the furniture, um, again, echoes, actually, of, e of Eileen Gray. Um, the 
not that they would have known either of them what the other was doing, uh, because this house was not known about very much outside America. Um, but here, built-in fittings, the fireplace, um, planting in, in, in inside. Uh, the same view. And this is, uh, uh, this is Schindler on the balcony above with his um, sort of mode of dress with a belt. Um, the couple at the bottom, this is the Freemans. This is Samuel Freedom and Harriet, who had the Freeman house uh, uh, and were friends there, particularly Harriet and Rudolf Schindler, and Dion Neutra, Neutra's wife, sitting um, in that space. And I'm going to show you a picture now, which is the reverse view, um, taken from where Schindler is standing up on the balcony above. And you can see here the, the relationship of that marvellously airy, open living area, the access within it. The, the, the cantilever here is also braced, actually, by things that hang down, supported this here. Um, the ceiling there, you, the concrete is there, the timber in between. I mean, that, that, that is out of um, Adolf Loos. The, 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 you, you, see, you see how the thing is, is constructed. Um, a rear view of that, the plastic quality of, of, of that house. That's quite stunning. Um, I'm going on to now another similar one for another client, in, starting in 1928, which is on Catalina Island. So if we're in Los Angeles, we've departed from... This is another holiday home. Um, uh, and it's on Catalina Island over here, which is blown up here, and it's to this end here, so it's facing sort of southwest into the, in the Pacific. Um, and this is built on... Uh, it's a summer residence with furniture, <laughs> OK? The, the, the couple it was designed for were um, proprietors of the Wolf School of Costume Design, so they did costume design for the film industry. Uh, so th they had some money to spend on this house, which is done in... Uh, I'm showing you now a model of it. It's, it's on a 45 degrees slope, and, and it's basically four stories high, staggered. Uh, now, this time built in timber frame almost in, in entirely. And like the, the other beach house, it's the grid across the side this way that's quite close. That it, it's a timber dimension thing that, that's holding the whole thing up. Um, you can see quite different on this hand. In the model there, though, the model there's not showing any of that going on, but Never mind. Um, here, here, here it is, facing out uh, over the bay, four stories high. It, it, it basically, in terms of levels, you come in at the middle level at the back here, and you step up into a, uh, uh, step up into a, a main living area that, that there. And there's a ramp, I don't like the Versailles, which, which slides behind this wall here up to a roof terrace on the top. All this orientated because there's a view beyond. So there's one big space to live in at that level, and then below there's a guest apartment sloping down the hill. From the other side, from the road, you can see it, it, it's fairly, fairly boxy, but the, 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 the grid of the timber structure is um, exposed on the sides. Um, the plans going, going through, um, you enter at this level, you enter this one at that point there, um, and it is an open space here with a terrace on front, with kitchens and things at the front, uh, and then there is a way here within this space of you stepping up, and then there's a ramp at this level that takes you up to roof terrace above, the one below enters from the outside, going down below. It enters from the other end. Here, I'll show you the beginning to go. So that's the main living one, roof terrace. That's the guest apart apartment down below. A um, few more pictures of that. Um, the, 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 the framing here is, is extraordinary. You see it's quite close together in, in dimensions, but it's a bolted timber. Um, um, there again, now, now these, these, this has been drawn later. I mean, the, 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 what you can do with a timber frame building, uh, which is not on concrete, it, it, it is uh, remarkably free in, in the, 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 the structure. Uh, drawings that people have done subsequently. Um, that's the view out, right, that you've got across the, the bay to the southwest. And then going in, in, in internally, um, a drawing that doesn't show any of that, that timber structure swinging across, but but basically, there is a fireplace which is masonry there with these things cutting across this way. This is the, 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 the entrance to this flat that occupies the space there. And there's a change of level there where you step up for if you want to go to the upper level and up the ramp, you go, you go up there. And I'll show you that as a proper plan. You can see what's going on. All right, so you, you come in and there's a living area with a, with a seat there. And there's a bedroom there that, that's just stepped up a particular level. Kitchen on this side. Um, terrace outside, bathroom to the terrace up above. All, 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 all quite tight. 
And that's what that looked like, that, that, that space. So there again, these steps where you change level become pieces of furniture, and the light fittings become pieces of furniture, as well as conventional seats with shelves. So the, 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 what you can do with, with, with timber um, is, is, is really being explored, explore, explored formatively. Uh, another view from the inside, the contrast of the light when you, when you look out back towards the bedroom part. The bedroom part above, a, 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 wind, a, wind, a mirror to enlarge the space, um, you can see how it's bolted together, the very simple structure. Um, uh, Mr. Wolf himself enjoying his customised furniture. Um, the lower level below, the guest one, which you enter from the other side, um, uh, through this end, um, uh, looks... Sorry, it end is the other end. Uh, the other end by the fireplace. Um, uh, and, 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 and has basically a, a sort of bed and a, and a desk um, and a chest. It's, it's quite... quite it's, it, it's, holiday, it's relaxing holiday home. You're not living there all the time. It's temporary. It no longer exists, this building, um, but it's been lovingly kept in, 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 in drawings. Um, going on to a more substantial... Um, uh, house. Uh, this house, the Howe House, is, is in an area of Los Angeles. I'm trying to find the... Here we are. There we are. Los Angeles is there. It's, 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 it's up towards the hills. You can see the grids of the streets where Kings Road House was there, there uh, with, but the hills behind going up in the middle, around um, uh, Silver Lake, a reservoir. Now, Howe was quite an interesting character. He was basically the son of a very wealthy um, railroad person in the 19th century, who became extraordinarily rich. Um, uh, and, uh, and because his father was very rich, he was, he was sent off to Harvard. Not only Harvard, he was sent off to Oxford, back here in England, um, where, um, where, he, where he joined the Fabian Society in, 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 in England um, and went and was... Uh, and, and produced... Uh, well, he, he decided to be a socialist, um, as, as he saw it. Um, when he came back and, and he was married with his wife. They both agreed in that uh, they, 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 wanted to, they wanted to distribute their wealth as best they could. And what they did was they, 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 their life, married life was very peripatetic. They, they went around distributing money to people um, uh, and inviting back people who didn't have money. Um, uh, so uh, Schindler was left very much on his own to do this house um, uh, uh, without much interference from the client. Um, and here it is at the top of a hill above the railway station down below. And this, again, is, is a mixture of concrete and timber frame, which you can see uh, here. Um, there's a garage in the lower bit of, 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 of the concrete bit, which is where they let people come and stay and gave them money, and then they went on and other people came to stay. And it's a basically um, a very simple two-story house, um, square, square in plan, um, and, and, and very Lothian in that this is a, a square you know, how those divided into halves and quarters, etc. Um, it, it, it does that, it, it does that um, in this, which in section, um, the concrete part is the lower part here, and the upper part is the timber part, um, with a sort of clear story <coughs> roof up above the main living areas. Um, here it is in plan, it's an easier to read plan, all right, the basic, basic square of a corner taken out for a terrace, so it's the three parts of a square, um, and over the main part, the, the structure. Uh, emphasizes that, um, with uh, stairs down to the bedrooms below, wrapped around the garage from this side. So there are the concrete parts down below. And the, 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 the timber framing here is, is, is lined along the lines of the shuttering of the, of the concrete part. Um, uh, I've got, that's another plan. It again shows how the, how the, how the it, it, it design, from, this is a lovely Schindler drawing, showing how, how the views control this is talking to the client how this house is going to work for them with, with, with views out. The top part was striated um, timber, bedrooms below. And there you can see the, 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 the casting of the concrete, the, the, the uh, two, two foot it is, I think, 16 inches uh, or 16 inches uh, sort of module for the battens, but giving it a proportioning device. This house was lovingly measured by uh, the English academic who, went to, who lived in it for a while. Um, I'll tell you his name in a minute, but um, uh, later on. So you, so you enter it at the upper level where the living part is. Uh, and again, the, 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 the making of it, uh, of what you can do with a, a, a timber frame engineered um, and worked out carefully, particularly on, 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 on site. Um, you can see the, 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 the grading of the, the roof, fireplace, 
Let's look for you up in the air with a light fitting. We'll get a very arty sort of photo. Um, uh, I'm going to move on now to another one. Um, this house, again, is in the mid-1930s, is in the gridded, uh, if we're in Los Angeles, in the gridded area down, down the street. It's actually on a very busy road junction. Um, and it's quite a large house um, uh, <coughs> for a designer of women's clothing. Um, uh <coughs> Sorry. Um, uh, and um, I'll go on to the... I'm quoting Rollins again. Uh, it's on this road that's quite busy. Uh, it, it's quite lar a large three-bedroom house, um, basically L-shaped in plan, but with a three-car garage over which there is a sort of granny flat that slots over it. Um, I've been in this one, so uh, it's now um, an art gallery, but a very busy road out, out, outside. Here, here in plan, the, the basically the house itself is L-shaped L-shaped around the, the patio, um, all, all, all at one level. Um, quite a large, not three or four bedrooms grouped, grouped here. The garage on this side off, off the road, because above the garage is this Granny Fat, which is the, 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 the most beautiful bit of actually this particular house. Um, it's what, what this is again is, is timber frame, but you can see here uh, it's become more rectilinear and 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 dare I say it distilled because I mean I think by this time um, the what Van Doesburg and um, Mondrian have been getting up to uh, come come over and uh, that that what's happening here is. Uh, the, those rooms that you're seeing uh, are, are the roofs, the, the ceilings and sizes of those spaces, those very rooms, are, are, are varied a lot with a lot of clear, clear story lighting. Uh, and uh, the roof does its thing over the top, but the ceilings of the rooms go up and down so that you get these modulated spaces un, 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 underneath. Um, that's onto the pool. The main, that's the main sort of living room area now, and this is the bedroom sort of side. And behind is the sort of granny flat up there. So this, these are not very good. The, I, I, all my photographs are out of books, I'm afraid, but this is when it's not really occupied with proper furniture. But it does show how, how the, the, slight, the sort of things you've seen in the last two of, of things being stacked and different heights within spaces um, is, is being thought of uh, uh, in a more complicated an imaginative way um, this time, and I just showed that that's a drawing of this house with these ceilings going up and down, and just to remind you of what uh, Van Doesburg, Van Essen were up to. And yes, that was a model made by Wrightfeld, but there were plans that house, and they worked as proper houses. Um, uh, the I'll just go take you further. Here, here there are just photos that show how these. Uh, as well as the, the, the ceilings of the rooms varying, that the partition walls here, first time he used a translucent glazing um, between or joining rooms so that you get things. And that, you can see here, it's not very good furnishings, but it works quite well as an art gallery, actually, with displaying things in it. But the, the rooms, there are various houses. But the, the, the granny flat part, which I did get into, was being occupied by a woman who was not too well, but was very kind in, in, in uh, allowing access, um, was uh, what, again, you can't really see in this way, but it, it's, um, sorry, it, it's over these three garages, and, and you, on, on the inside part, right in the other house, there's a porch and a staircase up here, which you see in this view here, coming up to it. Uh, you can enter it from that side, but you can enter it from the street side on the end here. So for what is a very small living place, you have... Um, Two, two, means of, two means of access, and very tight planning was you can go straight into the living room, uh, and the bedroom is up a shifting up a level for the ceiling of the thing underneath, up some steps behind the translucent screen here, with the breakfast room over there. So it's, it's very tight planning, but, but very beautiful, extremely, given the, the, the context of the thing, with its traffic around it, um, it was a really, um, it is a very beautiful space. That's the way that the bedroom part where the translucent screen works over it. Um, I'm going on to another one now, because um, uh, I've got to get through quite a few. This is a really cheap house done below the Freeman one, um, up a hill, again, in the same part of, of, of Los Angeles. Uh, and it's basically a, a double stack of, of two, two flats. Um, 
but on an incredibly restricted site. What, what he conjures out of this actually is, uh, what I'm remarking on here, is the sizes of these rooms. I mean, the ground, you enter from below, uh, and you have to get around to get to the other one above. Um, uh, no, sorry, you can go up to, to, into the middle. So you enter into the middle of a plan, this level, with a living room, which is carefully designed so it's not overlooked. Quite a generous size in the bedroom and small service room. The same with the one on the upper level. It can get a bit more room in its, its, its living room. But it gets the maximum amount of space, privacy, and views built incredibly cheaply by going in timber, clear story lighting and um, uh, uh, roofing felt with battens. And it's still there. It's a bit scruffy, but it, but it hangs. Yeah. Battens. battens, yes. Turn down. That green stuff you can see there is roofing felt. But, but again, the, 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 the imagination in, in using the, the different materials here in the, in the view there of, of, of the different materials, again, the, the, the freedom of them with a timber frame house on the different materials is, is, is I, I think, is, was really out of its time. Um, this, I'm coming now to one, again, at, at Silver Lake, which is one um, uh, looking over, uh, I showed you at the beginning, overlooking a lake, this, this, this side here. Um, this small one, uh, which we saw from side here, which is on, sits diagonally uh, um, across its site. Um, uh, the, this, again, is a very tight piece of, 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 of planning. If you look at the living area of this, that's the dining area there, and there's an eating area there, the kitchen there, um, uh, is, is very, very tight and small. And then the bedrooms, there were parents, then was quite a bit of space devoted to the children. And this is on the top of a hill. So, and you enter it from one side, which you get views from this way here, which I'm going to show you. The main views across this side, that side there. Um, uh, and there are also views back this way, because it is actually on the top, top of a hill. Um, and um, uh, you, 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 I'm showing these three-dimensional drawings here, because there's a garage that slots under part of it. You enter it off the street, up this route that goes through onto this side, which is here in three, three Ds. When you're, when you're in it, it had, had by it prescribed to have a pitched roof. It has a pitched roof that's two thirds of the way over it that turns into a roof terrace on the other side. And as a fairly simple drawing of how you get into it. And I just want to take you through that sequence in photos. Here we are on the street, right? So you see very little house and you go up these, 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 these steps here that turn an angle here on plan and that's where you're coming around here, and you come to an entrance at this point here, which is there. So that side of it on the hill is very treed on this, and this is where the bedrooms look out onto this part here, but it has the entrance as well. So, so entrance into that point there, and all the bedrooms are on this side, where it's all very, very treed. And you, to enter the house itself, you, you enter here up half a, half a flight. Um, I've twisted the plan around the other way there, you, you, you come up and you enter half into it, into the, and that's the entrance there with this marvelous handrail that goes back through that undergrowth and leads you to this door. And when you pass through that door at this level here, you go up half a level and you arrive in the dining kitchen part here, perched um, at this point here. Um, I'm going to show you a view looking this way of the dining kitchen. This partition actually has been taken down but the view in there, across there is you're, you're, you're sitting, hovering over these trees in, in the breakfast part, which is, is only a part of a space that, 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 that you're in, um, which you've arrived here, and it's, it, it, looking at it internally, you're in this part here. And I'm just showing you the roof here, which only goes for part of this, because the inside, the other side of this house, has a staircase to a roof terrace at that point there, and in the middle there's a living area there. The roof above it, you're on the top, you've got the, a, a roof terrace with no handrail and a pitched roof, and you can see the distance, the height there, where you're surrounded by these trees. I'm now going to go to this side of the house here, which has a completely different character. Um, that's that roof, you were sitting up there. This is an early view of it in, in, in black and white, so there's a staircase up to it. And these are all the bedrooms looking onto this patio outside. That's that view at night, right? Now, the thing. And, and those are bedrooms you, you see lit up there. Um, that is the view out from the space across here, and here's the lake down below. So you, you, you have this, because of the angle that this is, is put at, the relationship of the garden to the space is, is uh, I think, is, mag is magnificent. Although I've not been in this house, I've been struggling with these photos and plans to so try and understand it. That's a reverse view back to, to the patio bit by the, um, 
we, we've been, what we've been looking at is what goes on, on here outside. The living room does look across it, um, but the bedrooms don't. That's in that patio, the staircase going up as it is now. Um, another view of that, a closer view of that. The, 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 what you can do with a, a, a timber frame, um, uh, what you've been looking at is, is this part here. So that's children's bedrooms, bathrooms, the main bedroom occupying that amount of space. Uh, this bit living and dining on, 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 on this side. I'm now going to show you a view looking from over here, back across here. Now these two things here, they hold up the whole roof up above it, right bang on the pivot of that corner. That's with with L-shaped patio houses, that never happens. Uh, and that's a view of this looking reverse back from the, from the bedrooms onto that, the, uh, in, 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 into the main living area. And that's the reverse angle of that out onto the patio with these things holding up. And the roof, the soffit of the sloping roof slides over the top here back to the living room, which has this sliding roof that puts it with, with the furniture built in, um, with views three different ways, um, uh, and built-in furniture. Um, it's surviving this house because the daughter of the, the people who originated it has hung on to it, but it, it, it um, um, and used up a lot of my time. So the ne I'm going to f shoot through the next one to get to some other ones to try and finish by... Um, eight o'clock. Um, uh, the walkout. This is a bigger version of the same sort of house on on uh, the, the lake there, um, uh, and in section you can see it has the roof flowing through. It steps down the hill. It's it's much bigger, um, uh, but is organised with you entering at a, it's again into the living area and the dining tight tight kitchen uh, are made, so it's a bigger bigger thing. Uh, down again to the bedrooms down below, and, and a marvellous sort of porch that get, goes out so you can see uh, across Lake Silver Lake opposite. M m much more complicated um, than the previous one, but I'm going to dash, dash through it um, outside the entrance side. Where you, where you look out, it, 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 it looks out over. And again, it has this sloping roof, but the, the, the freedom of the timber frame um, on these sort of hilly sites is what this is about. Um, again, the fittings inside, I don't think quite as fine as the ones in the Oliver House, but um, we'll go through there. And now I want to show you a, very, a much smaller one um, for a single woman. We're now into the 1940s, um, and, and this is perched around a rock. Right? It's quite, the actual house occupies, the house is actually that bit there, car parked underneath it by the boulder. You clamber over the boulder to get to the entrance. You clamber over the boulder to get to the entrance. The house itself is really quite a small, small footprint um, on that bluff. Um, this pergola thing is all outside, outside part. Um, when you get in it, it's extremely small, very, very tight. Um, a fireplace um, where you sit, the dining table, a desk. Behind here is a piano, all within a tiny space with clear stray lights. Um, uh, I'm going to blow this plan up bigger and bigger because every inch of this thing is tight and beautifully planned for, 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 for use. And, and you can see the size of a fireplace there, how small this thing is. And just to look at the side here, um, the, 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 the way there are shelves and sills uh, and the, f the way the furniture moves with the, the, the framing of the house. Um, I've framed up really big here, the plan, so you can just see how. There, there's, there's, there's the piano. Um, with this desk on the side there, um, a couch, um, and the bedroom, which just, just slides off. Um, and a picture of that, there is the desk with a piano behind it, um, slight, slightly bigger, and the table cantilevering. Um, I'm going to show another one of these that, again, is, is quite small uh, in this way, done out in palm strings. Again, for a single woman, uh, uh, probably a holiday home for a, for a um, single woman, and there's a rather nice picture of her, the, the client, with her her hat and her thing. Um, this, uh, I'll, I'll explain it, is, is, is a single story, single story one, out in the wilds, built out of rock. Um, I just, before I describe this one, I just want to relate this back to Corbusier and the house that he did in Montbeau, uh, outside of uh, uh, Toulon, which had endless, which is built with rather rough stum stone in the way that this one we're going to see is done, but had, um, although it was quite ambitious, it, it, it didn't work with the climate, and she found it almost unlivable to, 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 to live in it. Um, but going to this house, 
uh, in this climate at this time. Uh, you, you, the, the, the key to this very small, tightly planned house for a single woman um, is the roof, which follows. There's a line of the hip of the roof, which is a line that goes through here. And basically what you have, a roof that slopes from that hip there and slopes this way. And then in this direction, that it's divided with steps so that it steps down in this direction, it's higher in this part and lower in, 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 in that part. I mean, the plan of it is you're whizzing in, you drive by car, um, you, you hop in again, it, like the last one, it has a little tight dining area, living area, um, an equally tight um, bedroom. Um, but over it there, the, the, the roofs, as you can see, it's sliding. This, I was describing in the plan, it slides on that hip access there. Um, but you get a clear story window and vent at all these points. So the roof comes from the you know, ventilation and, and, and secondary lighting. Uh, and there it is with its tooth of stone. If you, if you enjoy that sort of thing, well, why not? Um, uh, um, uh, and again, tightly planned. And these sort of junctions of where... Um, the fittings, tables and things, slide in with the various materials. Um, uh, I've got five more minutes. So um, this is another 1940s late house in studio city. Again, a bigger budget thing for a studio uh, executive. Um, uh, again, on, on a hill, but um, uh, it is actually much simpler than it looks in these drawings because we've got the sections on the ends. Uh, basically, there's a house here with an entrance in the middle here from, from driving over here. And it's planned around trees. There's happens to be a tree growing there next to the living rooms. Uh, that is a studio for working in, um, hanging out. Um, living room, kitchen, bathroom. Quite a conventional plan in, in, in that sense. But it's built very freely in timber frame um, with pitched roofs. Uh, this is the, the, the middle bit here, the middle part of the spine of this has clear story lights, and on the other side, the external walls slope down, um, and you can see the interiors in, the, in, in section. But the, the freedom with a, a frame to organ reorganize your, your pictures. You can hear, you can understand it a bit better here, coming in in the middle, living room, bedroom, a gallery, sort of gallery, kitchen, um, the studio part. Um, on, on the hill, so that the ex external, that's the end wall of the living room, uh, with that large glazed window there. Uh, behind that, the main part of it is like this, with a um, ceiling that rises up and, 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 and is airy. Uh, and, uh, and the plane, the, the, the external cladding of it takes its timber fence to, to the nth degree. Uh, uh, again, freedom within the, 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 the space for the fireplaces. Uh, and one more, the last one that I really come to tonight, um, uh, another studio city for an executive, a more lavish house, again spreading along the edge of a hill, uh, the late 1940s. The key to this one is um, that uh, the living room is basically a square living room on this corner here, and all this other stuff is rambling off um, uh, as freely as, 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 as it can. Um, here is this living room that is basically square, but, but in terms of freedom of sliding, um, I haven't shown you one where he did it slide one level over, over another. Um, th this has its roof structure sliding over this quite large living area of bedrooms stepping off down here. Um, uh, that's a view of it. The main living area is this part here, not a very good photo. But um, with these other possible, but you can you can see how it relates to its site. What is really striking about this is, is the is the is the interiors again here of the the inside to the outside again in tim with a clear story light uh, and the way what is a solid wall and what is an open wall and how you do a window has become with a reasonable budget. Uh, uh, not as agitated as the last two I've seen with it, but they're quite, they're quite agitated, but, but a really uh, generous um, form. Um, it, it, it's that's that living room blown up. Uh, we were looking out of that, you were looking out of a, a window here. Uh, there's a piano I'm going to show you on, on this side, and this fireplace, rather Frank Lloyd Whitey fireplace from the entrance where you slide down into it. So this big space slides off into the other spaces at the sides that haven't got many photos of. But that's a view out across a valley uh, of a fixed light window, but with opening nights at, 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 at the ends. And the view the other way 
Um, I've lost the piano, but it's behind where we've got here. But here, you know, I mean, the way the roof structure is, is, is doing its, its thing and the internal fittings are doing their thing quite perfect. Um, I'm going to finish now. Um, uh, just this, is, this is the entrance to the, the, the still one, the buck house, up to the granny apartment above. Uh, and the, 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 the subtlety of the way these planes fit together with handrails and the way it went into furniture. He did get a lot of this sort of, this is a, a desk, right, that, that, you know, can't you leave a desk um, with an opening bit, a few feet a bit above there. Um, and the sort of drawing that the one man practice with students working in it would, would, would turn out. Um, uh, um, not many of us do drawings like that this, these days. Um, a, a radiogram fitting done in this way. Uh, um, um, some other strange bits of furniture, which you think, why on earth would you make things like that out of bits of wood? But what they were for, they were, you, the end, you, you do the sofa as well. Uh, and you have this thing on the end that the drinks or the whatever it is could sit on that's triangular uh, and could um, uh, fold away. Um, uh, brief picture. This is the one I shot through the Walker House, which overlooked Silver Lake the other way, um, with him on it, and you can see the, the timber being done there. Enrique Mirales's comment on um, the juggling, and I think I'm coming to an end here because it's eight o'clock. Yes. Thank you very much, Philip. That was a lovely talk. Uh, before we uh, shift to a slightly more relaxed mode in a minute. I'll just deal with the, I think there's one question that was raised by uh, one of our Zoom audience, Eva Palacios. She has asked, did Schindler work predominantly with timber windows and structure for a specific reason or just due to cost? Um, What's your view? Yes, yes, he did, may, may mainly, mainly timber windows. Um, uh, yes, cost because many of the clients for his houses were on very modest um, incomes. They, uh, um, and I'm trying to think. I think that's the answer to that. So, that sorry, it's rather a short answer. But <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Earthquakes. Yes, earthquakes. Yes. Um, uh, Neutra who we're not talking about tonight, was really keen on doing steel buildings and steel frame. Um, uh, uh, yes, it would be Earth, Earth, Neil saying earthquakes would have been amazing. Yeah. Right, so uh, before we bid farewell to our Zoom audience, could I just tell everybody about our forthcoming event? So in May, we have uh, a talk on Gene Veltz and I think a particular building in France that we'll be exploring. That's going to be at Grimshaw's office, which for a variety of reasons we can't meet here in, uh, in May, but nevertheless I think it'll be quite exciting to be hosted by Grimshaw's. That, uh, for, for the benefit of our live audience, is going to be uh, live. We're not able to Zoom that. And then in uh, in uh, June, we are having a, uh, a talk on, um, on Basil Spence, a, uh, a, a re I suppose a reassessment of Basil Spence, hero or villain. Uh, he's got, the guy is Marmite, I think, to a lot of people. Uh, no, 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 James is here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all, we're all allowed to express our opinions freely, I think, Philip. Yes. We don't cancel yeah. anybody in this forum. Uh, well, I, <laughs> no, I have a lot of very good friends who are Scots. Uh, so uh, that's in, in June, and I think we may, we may Zoom that as well. So we look forward to seeing some of the people. <laughs> we'll talk about this later, James, I think. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, Zoomers, for coming in tonight. And I... Uh, Wish you a, a very um, good evening or good morning, depending on where you're coming to us from. Thank you very much indeed.